Okay. Uh, anything else left here? <laughs> so uh, I, I, I think it's about time to start. So uh, I'm uh, very glad to present uh, Bin Yung Son, who just uh, moved to Zhejiang University and announced his talk on low degree cohomologies of arithmetic groups. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dima, for for inviting me to to give the give a talk here. Actually, this is the first time I give a online seminar talk, so I hope everything will go well. Uh, the the title is low degree cohomology of arithmetic groups. Okay, let's uh, let's start. So. Uh, the talk has five parts. First, I will just uh, introduce some uh, basic notion of beta cohomologies and the group cohomologies. Then uh, I explain some uh, uh, definition of continuous cohomology. Then explain Borel map, and then uh, the, the, the fourth part is, sec is more technical about uh, uh, vanishing of certain cohomologies of induced representations. And the, the fifth part is about the proof. This use Frank's filtration. In algebraic topology, there is a, a basic problem to calculate the cohomology. This, uh, so this, this cohomology uh, space, a cohomology group of uh, topological space X Mm, with coefficients in Z. Okay. An easier problem is to calculate the cohomology group when, if we replace the coefficient by, by C, by C, okay, complex number. This is easier, but uh, still not, uh, not easy in general. Here are two uh, a very simple example of the circle, group, the circle space. We know the cohomology of the circle space. In, in degree i equal to zero and one, this uh, space, uh, this cohomology space is one dimensional. In all other degree, in all other degrees, it's zero. Eh? And uh, if we consider a more uh, complicated space like a zero in arm or the zero in z, then what is the cohomology of this space? We we at least I don't know the answer. Okay, this is. Uh, could be uh, quite uh, complicated. Uh, here your definition, uh, a non-empty path-connected topological space X is said to be aspherical if its uh, uh, homotopy group vanishes at all or uh, in, for all degree of uh, bigger than one degree. Okay. This is pi n x, pi n x. This is homotopic, uh, hom homotopic group vanishes whenever n is larger than, larger than one. Okay. Uh, okay. So here is a remark. If x is a connected the CW complex, then x is aspherical if and only if uh, it's uh, it's universal covering space is contractible. This is called the Whitehead theorem. So uh, yeah, so we are interested in the cohomology of these uh, cohomology of these spaces, aspherical spaces. Okay. So, for example, the the circle the circle S one is aspherical. But the higher dimensional sphere is k when k uh, is at least a two. This is not aspherical. Okay. Things uh, we know this the, the, the universal covering space of this circle is a line, so it's uh, contractible. So this is aspherical. But this is a higher dimensional sphere is k. This is already simply connected. So uh, this is, uh, but this is not contractible. So this is not not aspherical. Mm. 
it, it's a classical result that uh, homotopy equivalence class of isovertical CW complexes, this, uh, this set is, uh, his one one corresponds to the set of all uh, isomorphism classes of groups. So the map is just uh, start from a top, uh, topological space to, to its fundamental group. So, uh, yeah. So, in order to understand the spherical space, it's the same as to understand our groups. Here is a, this is the classical result from algebraic topology. If X is spherical and the gamma is a, its a fundamental group, then uh, the homo homologic uh, group. Of X equals the the um, group cohomology of this gamma. Okay. More general, we can consider local system of on, on X. So if it is a locally constant shift on X, then this shift cohomology, this H I X F, this shift cohomology equals the the group cohomology of this fundamental group. Okay. Here, if x is a stock of, of x, f at a point x, at a point small x. Okay. So the shift cohomology is the same as this uh, the group cohomology. Okay. Uh, for example, if uh, we, we consider the space r in mod z n, so this is a, this is a torus. Okay. The cohomology of this torus equals so the, to the fundamental group of this torus is just the z raised to power n. So this this the cohomology of this uh, this space. Uh, yeah, this 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 cohomology space singular cohomology equals this group cohomology. Okay, of course we we know how to calculate this cohomology. Okay, both both sides. Here is another example. So let, uh, let G be a Lie group with only finitely many connected components. Then for these groups, there is a maximal compact group K. Okay. And uh, uh, such a maximal compact group is unique up to conjugation. So this is a classical result. And uh, let gamma be a torsion free discrete subgroup of G then this, this double coset space, G model gamma model K is aspherical. And this gamma uh, is, uh, is isomorphic to the um, fundamental group of, of X. Okay. Equal, uh, yeah. This is equal. Hence, by, by, the, by previous, uh, previous argument, we know this cohomology space equals the this this cohomology space. Okay, this cohomology space cohomology of this uh, double coset equals the this group cohomology group cohomology of gamma. Okay. More generally, for every um, finite dimensional representation gamma of f. Okay. So this up uh, f is a finite dimensional representation of gamma. We know the the, the this Group cohomology, H i gamma f equals the cohomology of certain uh, local system. This f underline this local system on on this double coset space attached to f. Okay. So this space is uh, uh, this cohomology space is usually uh, is often very interesting for arithmetic as for an for arithmetic study. So I think everything here uh, uh, are well known. So we are interested in this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, group cohomology. Okay. And by Chaplow's lemma, we know this cohomology equals the cohomology of this representation, okay, we, we consider induced from gamma 
to G of F, this representation, this is a representation of, of G, then we can, can consider continuous cohomology. Okay. This representation equals the continuous cohomology of this induced representation. Okay. Uh, the, this continuous cohomology may not be in, that well known. So in, in this part, let me explain um, the definition of, of this continuous cohomology. Uh, any question up to now? Okay. So let me uh, re recall the, the basic theory of continuous cohomology. So this is general setting. So G is uh, an arbitrary locally compact Hostoff topological group, okay. arbitrary uh, such group. Then a representation of G is defined to be a quasi-complete, quasi-complete Hostoff in the locally convex topological vector space over C together with a continuous linear action, okay, G cross V to V. Okay. So uh, the underlying space, we we all always assume the underlying uh, space to be quasi complete host of in the locally convex. Okay. Of course, all the presentations of G forms a category. Okay. The category we call it uh, uh, rep G. Okay. But this category is not an abelian category. So the the usual the usual cohomology theory does not apply. So we need a, 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 some some kind of relatively the homological algebra. So the continuous cohomology uh, uh, group is defined by Hochschild and Mostel in 1962. Okay. I, I will recall the definition of this continuous cohomology. So given a, a homomorphism phi from V1 to V2 in, in this category, okay, this is, is a homomorphism of representations. We say this homomorphism is strong if is a topological vector space is a kernel, the kernel of, of this map is a direct demand of a topological vector space. And the image is also a direct demand. And the induced map, this induced map V1 model kernel goes to image of phi. This is a linear isomorphism, of course. We also require this to be a topological linear isomorphism. So we require this map to be a homeomorphism. Okay. So this is a definition of strong morphism. So a representation V of, of G is said to be relatively injective if for all injective strong homomorphism from V1 to V2, uh, every homomorphism uh, from V1 to V extend, extends to a homomorphism from G2 to V yes, in this committed diagram. So this, this definition is, is, uh, is very close to the usual definition of injective objects in a category, okay? in an, an abelian, abelian category. But uh, here we, the only difference is we require this map this injective map V1 to V2 to be strong. Okay. So this is, so we call this relatively injective in such representation. Okay. Here, here is an example. For example, uh, let V0 be an arbitrary quasi complete locally convex host of topological vector space. Okay. Then, uh, then this this space, okay, this this guy is this is a space of all continuous functions on G with values in V zero. This is again a uh, quasi complete locally convex host of topological vector space, okay, and the G, we let G X on this space by right translation. Then this is a representation of G, okay. This representation is always uh, relatively injective. Okay. 
So this is an example of relatively injective representation. Yeah. Then for every representation V of G, a strong injective resolution of V is just a sequence, just uh, such a sequence, okay? And uh, uh, a sequence of representations of G such that all these J0, J1, J2, and so on are relatively injective. And all these all these morphisms, all, all the homomorphisms here are strong homomorphisms. Okay. So this is called the strong resolution. Okay. A strong injective resolution. Uh, we know that every representation has, uh, has such a resolution. Okay. This is similar to the, the, the usual homological algebra. Okay. Now we can define the uh, continuous homology. Is we we first take a, a strong injective resolution of V, then we take a G invariant on this uh, on this complex. Then we take a, take a homology of this complex. Okay, this uh, then this guy this guy is a locally convex topological vector space. This homology space is a locally convex. Uh, topological vector space, but it may not be Hostov. Okay, is a topological vector space. This this is this space. This homology space is independent of this resolution. Okay, so this is a classical result, and this is a classical theory of of continuous co continuous homology. Okay, let's uh, give one example of of continuous homology. So now we assume G is a real reductive group and the pi is an irreducible unit representation of, of G and the F is an irreducible finite dimensional representation of G. And we are interested in the homology of, of this tensor product. Okay. The, the, mm, so now this is a well-known result. If, if pi, and if dual has the same infinitesimal character, then this is just a, 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 such a home space. Okay, this is, here k is a maximal compact subgroup of G. This G is the algebra of this G. Okay, this, this G is the algebra of this, this group G, and the, the, this subscript C indicates the complexification. Okay? Similar, this k is the the algebra of this group K. So this is, in order to calculate this continuous homology, this is just a, just a purely algebraic problem. Okay, this is a purely algebraic problem. So we will be interested in such kind of continuous homologies. And now we come to the Borel map. Does it really have to be unitary? Hmm? Does it really have to be unitary? This, this pipe is unitary, but the F is finite dimensional implementation, which is uh, irreducible, but not unitary. We are not unitary. This F is not unitary. No, of course, F not, but so pi has to be unitary. Pi is unitary. Okay. Pi is unitary, but if if may not be unitary, just a finite dimensional representation. Okay. Okay. Now let the, uh, gamma be a, a lattice in G. Okay. G is a Lie group. Okay. Lattice means uh, this G mod gamma. This this space has an, an invariant probability measure. Okay. This is the definition of lattice. This discrete subgroup in this quotient has an invariant probability measure. Okay. So let F be a finite dimensional representation of gamma. Then we can we have a map from this continuous this continuous homology tensor with F. Okay. Then this tensor product has a natural action of gamma on, on this tensor product. Okay. 
this gamma x on f, of course, eh? f, f is the representation of gamma. And this gamma also x on this, this, this converge. Okay, since gamma x on, on this g plus, g plus means, uh, this g plus means the identity connected component of g. Okay, this is a Lie group, connected Lie group. Okay. Then gamma x on this is the cohomology space. This gamma also x on this tensor product. Okay. And uh, there is a, a natural, natural map from the, this goes to the, the group cohomology. Okay. I will explain this map. This is called the Borel map. Yeah. We are uh, we are interested in the problem that uh, is this is this map a linear isomorphism. Yeah. So let me first explain how is this Borel map defined. Okay. Mm. Uh, we consider if Intersection of f with g plus, then um, uh, this okay uh, we uh, this space equals equals this guy. This is obvious, okay. And uh, and also this this group homology equals we we can uh, um, calculate this this group homology in two steps. We first take a Take this cohomology and then take gamma invariant. Okay. So this guy, this cohomology equals this guy. Okay. So in order to define the Borel map, uh, in order to define this map, we only need to define the the, the similar Borel map from from this space go to this space. Okay. Okay. So this is defined uh, in in this way. So. We start from this this tensor product, and then this guy equal to this. Okay, and uh, then we uh, um, we have a restriction map from this homology space to to this homology space. Okay, from here to here, this is just the restriction map. Okay, this is this group. This, this group. This is a subgroup of G plus. Eh? Gamma intersects G plus. It, it, Subgroup of G plus. So we have a restriction map from here to here. Okay, we, we get this map, and from uh, from this this to to, to oh, this equality. Okay, this equality is is just obvious. Uh, this is a, a finite dimension space with which carries the trivial equation of this this group. So we have this equality. And this map, and this map is just induced by the inclusion of, of this space to F. This is a supplementation of F, so we have such map. Okay. So, so we have this, this guy, the map from this guy to uh, the map from this guy to this guy. Then we take a gamma in, gamma invent. We get uh, um, Get get this this map this restricted map. So this is the definition of the Borel map. Okay. Anyway, we have we have such a linear linear map. Okay. In all cases. Okay. So we we want to know whether or not this is a linear isomorphism. Okay. Here are some uh, other result. So yes. If G is connected, simply connected in the neopotent, so this is neopotent. If G is a neopotent group, and F equal to C, okay, this is just a trivial representation. Then this map is always an isomorphism. Okay. okay. Sorry. Sorry. So in particular, this means uh, if if G is a, a neopotent group, then this homology space in the F equals C, then this homology space is actually does not depends on gamma. Okay? It only depends on this, this group G. Okay. 
This means the cohomology of G mod gamma is independent of the gamma actually. When G is a nilpotent group, okay? This is nil manifold. This means the cohomology of this nil manifold is independent of the, the, this gamma, okay? And uh, yes, if G is compact, this is also yes. If G is compact, then uh, only this is this is the zero only uh, when G is compact, then gamma must be a finite group. Then this cohomology is non zero only when I equal to zero. So both sides are, are, are easy to calculate. So we, we know this is isomorphism. Mm. So the most interesting case is when G is reductive. In this case, when the degree I is small, so in, in in many cases, we know this is an isomorphism. This is a result of many, many authors, so include the uh, with Schumer, and, uh, and also uh, there are some work of, 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 of Groben. I think Groben is in the audience. <laughs> but in general, the answer is no. So we will, here I, I have said that it's an isomorphism when I is small. So now I want to explain what does this means, I is small. Okay. So for G, a real reductive group, we, ha we can define a constant, it's called Rg. Rg is the minimum of all such, all, all these degrees I, so that, uh, so that for some uh, irreducible finite dimensional representation f of g and some infinite dimensional irreducible unitary representation pi of g, this continuous cohomology is non-zero at a degree i. Okay. For, for one finite dimensional representation f in the infinite dimensional in the unitary representation pi, the cohomology does not vanish at, at, at degree i. We can we uh, take the minimal such i. Okay? This is defined to be Rg. Okay? Uh, if g has no infinite dimensional irreducible unit implementation, then we take Rg just to be infinite. So this is basically when g is compact or when g is abelian, then we just take Rg to be infinite. So uh, this Rg is calculated in all cases. So uh, here is um, a description of Rg in terms of structure theory. Okay. We, we take a Cadon involution theta from G to G. Okay. Uh, then it induces a Cadon involution of, of the complexified the Lie algebra. And the, it, this, this theta, this theta also induce a um, decomposition. Okay. Decomp this decomposition. Then Rg equals uh, the, the minimum of the dimensions here, this dimension here. Q runs through all proper, proper theta stable parabolic subalgebra algebra of this GC. And the NQ is, uh, denotes the neopotent radical of Q. Okay. We take a neopotent radical of the theta stable parabolic intersect this this SC. This is the involution part. Okay. Then we take a, a minimum of all these dimensions. This is just Rg. Okay. So we can describe this Rg in terms of the structure of, of the algebra. Okay. Just since this Rg is calculated in all cases by by many by many people. Mm, for example, uh, this is when, when G is a complex the algebra case. Okay. This, this is a real case. For example, if G is SLNR, the Lie algebra is SLNR, then RG is just the rank. Okay. So I think in many cases, this RG is just a rank. For, for sympathetic algebra, this is also rank. For if G is SOPQ, this is just is still rank. RG is still rank. 
And for SUPQ, it's still rank. Right? But in some other cases, it's not. For example, SP22, this is not rank, this is a four. It's not, not a split rank. Anyway, this is, is known in all cases. Okay. Okay, now we can state the, the main result. Uh, uh, let G be a real reductive group, arbitrary real reductive group, and F be an arbitrary irreducible finite dimensional representation of, of this G. Okay. Then um, for every arithmetic lattice gamma of G, this Borel map is a linear isomorphism when this degree R is so smaller than RG. Okay. So uh, this so this this RG this this degree is so this is isomorphism for all all all, all gamma. If you fix the gamma, it's possible to it's possible to so in the question okay. mm. uh, here is the definition of arithmetic lattice. So uh, gamma is gamma is a lattice in G. So uh, if gamma certifies this here certifies this condition, then we say the gamma is a arithmetic lattice. This means there exists there exists a reductive linear algebraic group H over Q in the subjective continuous homomorphism from the, uh, the real group uh, HR plus to G plus uh, such that uh, uh, this map has compact kernel, compact kernel in the, this, this lattice, the image of let, this lattice is commensurable to, to this gamma intersect G plus. Okay. Yeah, HZ is just, uh, uh, is this is a definition of H Z with a fixed embedding of H to some J in over of a Q. Okay. Yeah. I think this is a real definition of arithmetic lattice. Yeah. So the, this bound is, uh, so this isomorphism is true for all arithmetic lattice. Okay, this isomorphism. Uh, there are there are many previous there are many earlier work on 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 this isomorphism of Borel Borel map. Yeah, I uh, I give some example here, but uh, uh, there must be some other interesting uh, interesting cases. I I I don't know. So first, uh, much humor. Uh, prove this uh, when G mod gamma is compact and F equal to C. He, uh, in, in, in this in this case, he proved the Borel map is injective for all I, okay, for all I, okay, and uh, bijective for I less than or equals a constant M G. This M G in many cases is roughly equals to half of RG or fourth of RG. So this bound is, so, so we improve this bound. And uh, um, Borel consider the, the, the non-compact case. So when, when G mod gamma is non-compact. Okay. So here G is a connected reductive linear algebraic group and uh, G is an, an arithmetic group. Then the Borel map is injective when I less than G and is bijective 
when i is less than or equal to another constant. Okay. Uh, for example, if g equal to g of n over q, then the constant uh, cg is roughly uh, half of n, and mg is roughly fourth of n. Yeah. Our rg is n minus one, so we also improve the uh, Borel's uh, bound. And uh, uh, Yang, yeah, uh, he improved Borel's uh, bond. Uh, he, he felt that the Borel map is injective when i less than or equal to 2cg plus 1. So this bound, of course, is better. And, uh, and the Jesu Li in the uh, Shum proves that uh, when f he <laughs> has a think this 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 is uh, this number is really uh, Larger than than RG, I think. So, but here he they require this highest uh, weight of of F to be regular. So this so this um, this vanishing result does not apply to the case when F is a trivial representation. Okay. And. Uh, uh, in the uh, Groben and the other people they also study the case when when g equals sp4 over a number field k over a totally real number field k. Okay. So they prove this uh, the map uh, this uh, this this real map when respect to the Eisenstein homology. So this is a, this is a direct, uh, this Eisenstein homology is a direct command of the usual group homology. Okay. Uh, he proved this map is isomorphism for i uh, less than 2n. Okay. Okay, n is the degree of, of, of the num number field k. And for when G is a split group, uh, all the orthogonal, when G is all the orthogonal group, or the, all the simplest group, and when gamma is the arithmetic, an arithmetic uh, lattice, then uh, Groben proved that the Borel map is a linear isomorphism when R less than IG. Okay, so this is already proved by, by Grobner. And uh, actually, they get more refined results. Uh, he, Grobner also get more refined results in, in this case. Okay. Of course, he also studied some other cases. Okay. Uh, okay, let me give another, uh, uh, another example. I, I'm not sure whether this is a previous known or not. Maybe, maybe it's known. Okay. So we can consider the group uh, uh, UPQ, okay, mod UP times UQ in the mod arbitrary lattice gamma. Okay. Here P is larger than Q and larger than or equal to three. Okay. In this case, in this case, we know every lattice in, in this group is an arithmetic lattice. So, uh, so we apply the, the isomorphism of the Borel map. We know this, this, uh, the first, so for this space, the first beta number is zero, and the second beta number is one, just this is one dimension, okay? So this, uh, in particular, we know this, the second best number of this space is independent of gamma. Okay. This uh, looks interesting. 
the four make it don't take any so for the proof we need to study cohomology of induced fermentations so here uh, now let g be a real reductive group and uh, f be an irreducible finite dimensional representation of g and let p be a proper parabolic subgroup and the n is the neopotent radical of p and the l is the levy, levy part g mod n then given these data, we can define a constant Q, Q, G, F, P. This is just the minimum of, of all these degrees I such that uh, uh, there is such that for some induced augmentation, this, this continuous cohomology does not vanish. Okay. Here, the, uh, in this induced augmentation, we require this sigma to be some irreducible the dominantly unitarizable representation. Okay. Here, here is the definition of dominantly unitarizable. Okay. So we take a cadeau sub, sub algebra of the, the, the Levy LC, and then we fix the splitting so that P equals to L times uh, uh, N. Okay. Then a character of this L plus the positive character of this L plus is said to be dominant. This is a real notion. If uh, new, uh, new is a positive character, then we have a differential, which is still denoted by this new, and then new restricted to HC pairing with a co-root. Okay, alpha is a root, then we have root for, for this N. Okay. Then we take a co-root, then take a pairing. This pairing we is always in the negative. Then we say that uh, um, this character is dominant. Okay, this is a real notion. Then an irreducible uh, casimir wallach representation of this L plus is said to be dominantly naturalizable. If it, is, it has a form, the sigma dialog. Uh, tends a new. So this uh, here, new is a uh, unit representation, and uh, sigma zero is a unit representation, and the new is a dominant character. Okay. So uh, dominant unitarizable means unit retains a uh, uh, dominant character. Okay. And uh, in more general, irreducible cosmic wallach representation, sigma of L, is said to be dominantly unitarizable. If so are some in the hence all irreducible subrepresentation of this sigma restricted to it, L plus. Okay. So uh, dominant unitarizable just the uh, unit retains dominant character. Okay. Uh, so use Shapiro's lemma plus uh, co constant theorem. We can express express this constant in terms of some structures there, okay. I will not explain. So the key local result is that this RG is always smaller than or equal to this one, okay. Uh, so in other words, this cohomology, the, the tensor product of an finite dimensional representation with an induced implementation, okay? But in this induced implementation, we, we uh, require this sigma to be dominantly neutralizable, okay? For every such sigma, the cohomology vanishes for all i less than rg, okay? So, so for, for, for such induced representation, the cohomology, the continuous cohomology of this representation vanishes in, for all degree i less than rg. So these, these, these homology space vanish at, uh, at low degree. Okay. So the proof is just by uh, tedious and the case-by-case -case analysis. So 
this is a little bit complicated. Then given this, we the other, all other step in the proof of of the isomorphism of Borel map is either previously known or, or easy. This actually use the Frank's filtration. So let me uh, review some uh, mm, uh, some important results of, of, of Frank. Okay. So here G is a connected reductive linear algebraic group over Q. And G is the real point. This G is the real point. And uh, let A be the largest split central torus in G. Then we have uh, then we have this A G plus this is called A G. Okay. Then we can have the the space of continuous functions on this guy. Just, just defined to be the direct limit of this. Okay. This here, here KF runs through all open compact subgroups of, of G of finite adels. Okay. Then continue, the space of continuous functions contains the space of smooth functions and the contains the space of smooth automorphic forms. And now let F be a fin irreducible finite dimensional implementation of this G plus. Then, uh, then uh, there is a, a very important result. Of, uh, we, we are interested in, the, in the, this cohomology space. This also equals this cohomology space. Okay. This is continuous. This is the representation on the space of continuous functions. Is this cohomology equals the cohomology of the space of smooth functions? Okay. I think this equality is um, this is a result of Hochschild, Boston, and the Brank. Okay. Then for this equality, this is more deep. This is a deep, deep result. This. This is proof, uh, conjectured by Borel and Hard. And the uh, Hard proves this, this isomorphism, uh, this equality in when G has a uh, split rank one, okay, and the Frank proves this in general. Okay. So we, in order to calculate this, uh, this this cohomology, we only need to calculate the cohomology of the space of automorphic forms. Mm. So in the space of automorphic forms contain the space of the L2 plus epsilon automorphic forms and also contain the space of uh, square integral automorphic forms. Okay. And uh, this is some, some decomposition of automorphic forms. Okay. So maybe you said it before, but What's your definition of automorphic form in this context? Automorphic form? Uh, they are not k finite. They this guy, right? Yeah. This, this guy, I, I have not explained actually. So this is by definition, this is just uh, uh, an element here. First, it's a smooth function here. Smooth function here. Okay. I mean, I'm worried, about the hmm? I'm worried about the k-finiteness. I'm worried about the k-finiteness. We don't require k-finiteness. Yeah. Okay. I call it a smooth automorphic form. So it's just uh, the uh, uniformly modular growth. And they're finite. Okay. We don't require it to be, uh, uh, to be uh, k-finite. Okay. So it's a representation of, of, of G. This is a representation of G. Okay. This is not a, only a GK module, but it's a representation of G. Okay. Yeah, I, I prefer to use uh, uh, source of the Okay, then uh, uh, the space of automorphic forms is an, a decomposition in terms of generalized infinitesimal cap. Okay. 
Here I is a maximum idea of the universal infinite object. Oh, sorry. I should say this is Z, Z, the center of this universal infinite algebra. Okay, then we can uh, have a decomposition. The Frank's filtration said that uh, we, we consider the quotient of the space of automorphic forms attached to this I. Okay, so. Oh, of this A, okay. The, the space of this aut automorphic forms uh, as a quotient of the space of automorphic forms by the space of uh, L2 plus epsilon automorphic forms, okay. Then this quotient has a finite filtration such that every successive quotient is a direct sum of representation of, of this form. So this, so every sub quotient is a, a induced representation. So here, the important thing is that this sigma, this sigma is a unit representation, and this new is the dominant, extra strictly dominant in this case, at least it's dominant, okay? So, so the, the sub quotient, so, so this, this guy has a, a finite filtration and every sub quotient is some kind of uh, uh, induced representation, induced representation, inducing from a dom uh, dominantly unitizable representation. Okay. Then the, Eisen, the theory of Eisenstein theories, from the theory of Eisenstein theories, we know that uh, this the space of uh, L2 plus epsilon automorphic forms is a direct sum of, of the space of square integral global automorphic forms in the some, some induced representations. Okay. Some induced representation. Um, maybe take a, we need to take a, some invariance of some intertwining operators. So these induced implementation are just uh, unitary, unitary induced implementation, induced from unitary implementations. Okay. Then from this, uh, this is the theory of Eisenstein theories in the from uh, Frank's filtration, we know that uh, this Borel map, this uh, this map, this is not Borel map. This 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 uh, since this. This guy is a subspace of the space of automorphic forms, so we have an obvious map. Uh, this is a this is a linear isomorphism whenever i less than this num this number, inf of this p is a proper parabolic of, of g, of this number. Okay, so this is a, a consequence of Frank's filtration of in the this in the this decomposition. Okay. This isomorphism is is uh, is previously known. For example, it appears in in a Grobner's paper. And the Grob and the Grobner uh, told me it also appeared in an uh, an earlier paper in uh, of Frank. Okay. So this is isomorphism, and uh, this implied that. Uh, uh, the Borel map, this guy, is a linear isomorphism if I less than Rg. Of course, uh, I, I mean, uh, so this is isomorphism in the when, I should, uh, yeah, when I less than Rg, then this, this guy, the, the cohomology of uh, this cohomology space equals, we can replace this, this eh, sorry. <laughs> We can replace this this space by the finite dimensional uh, uh, subrepresentation appearing in this, this space. Okay. For degree i less than r g, we the, the infinite dimensional representation, infinite dimension irreducible representation in he, appearing here does not uh, does not uh, contribute to the cause. To the cohomology. 
Okay, so, so in this, so use our local result, we know this bottom map is a linear isomorphism when I is smaller than RG. So, so we prove the, the isomorphism of Borel map when G is a real deductive, uh, is a linear algebraic group. In general case, uh, in the, in, in general case, in the for general arrestment lattice, we can use elemental method to reduce to this case. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I have already finished here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, questions, please. So, what would be the goal sort of the later stage? What's for the future? Then? I'm asking about uh, some future goals. Or what, what's, what are other some problems here that one should some of these uh, holy gray or something like that? So, sorry, what are? Hmm? I'm asking about some future goals here. Future? Future oh. goals or problems? What's somehow the? Oh, what is the goal? What is the goal to, to study this problem? Or the, the ultimate, uh, ultimate problem oh. here. What are the ultimate problem? The problem map is, is Studied, I think, by Borel in, in very early in 1960s or 70s. In the two, he used it to, to calculate stable cohomology of, of, of some, of some uh, arithmetic group. Uh, Can I ask you a question, Binyong? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. What okay. is the role of the coefficient system in your work? What, what is the role no. of the coefficient system? Oh, no. Is the uh, all the arguments? I think the, the most interesting case is just uh, when f equal is trivial, f equal to c, the trivial local system. But the proofs the don't re reduce to that. You have to keep f uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. You need to keep the coefficient system with you, or it gets reduced to the trivial coefficient system. Uh, we we need to keep the, the, the arbitrary local system. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, for example, if if the simplex example is when G is compact, for example, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. When G is compact, then this this gamma is a finite group. Okay. Okay. Then this F might not be might not be uh, a trivial representation of G. Mm -hmm. mm. But uh, F. But, yeah. Well, for example, if it is a non-trivial representation of G and the gamma is, is just a trivial group, okay? Mm -hmm. So in, in this case, this is also an isomorphism. For uh, G compact and gamma finite group, it has... Uh, Ga gamma is a trivial group. Gamma is a trivial group, for example. Yes. Yeah, then this is then... an isomorphism. It has some uh, non-obvious uh, region. Hmm? Are you making some non-obvious statement? No, this is obvious. Huh? 
in this example is obvious, but in some example, maybe if, if G is a, an algebraic group defined over, over Q and uh, mm, uh, for example, if G is an algebraic group defined over a number field, okay, then in some Archimedean price, G can be compact. Okay. In, in, in some other price, G can be split maybe. And some okay. other Archimedean price. So the, the final dimensional representation may be some, some kind of mixed. Final dimensional representation of, of this Archimedean group. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. All right, no. No, uh, the Borel mapping is in isomorphism for G, a compact group for a certain range of I. For all I. When G is a compact group, then this, uh, this, this gamma, is only a, must be a finite group in this case. And then it's an isomorphism for all i. Yeah, yeah, for all i, actually. Uh, and I'm asking whether that's an obvious statement or it's a non-trivial statement. This is, this is obvious. This is a trivial statement. When G uh, for is, gamma, uh, any finite group and uh, G compact. Yeah, this is trivial. This is trivial. Because yeah. uh, the finite group, the cohomologies are all zero. Yeah, yeah, only zero degree of pair, yeah. I see, okay, okay. Yeah. I was, uh, just one more question in uh, the, in your uh, discussion of uh, Eisenstein series, you were looking at two plus epsilon. What is the role of epsilon? Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. So th this is because of uh, Frank's filtration. Frank's oh, filtration, okay. when, when this space automorph forms, modular this uh, uh, two plus automorph form, almost square integral automorph form, this quotient has a, a, a filtration. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need and not two, and, and not uh, two, two is not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, two is not good. Yeah, two is not good enough. Okay, two is not, uh, but uh, uh, there, we know. By zero Eisenstein series, we know the difference from two and two plus epsilon. Right? This is this is the composition. I see. Yeah. This is the, the usual theory of Eisenstein series due to Langlands. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is usual zero Eisenstein series. Yes. Mm. Two plus epsilon is uh, two plus something else. Two plus mm. epsilon is tempered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Remove, I mean, the, 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 the tempered part. Yeah, yes, tempered part, yes. Yes, this is a tempered part, yes. This, this induced representation, this is a unitary induced representation. This, this omitted the unitary character. This omitted yes, unitary yes. character. Non discrete part. Hmm? Not, not discrete part, this is a continuous part. Yeah, I yes. know, but A2 of, I mean, you have the A2 plus epsilon, which is the whole tempered spectrum. But that's equal to the discrete part plus the things which are coming from the levies. So that's the Eisenstein series stuff. But yes. the A2 was not discrete series, no? It is all of A2. A2, this A2 is discrete series. Uh, this, 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 this is a discrete series. Yeah, yes, this this discrete spectrum. Yes, and this this A two also is A two discrete series, A two G Q. A two G Q G Q mod G A. G Q mod G A. Yes, yes, yes. So this is this is this is discrete. Yes, discrete spectrum. This is discrete spectrum. Yes. All right. Good. Good. How come no one calls it two minus epsilon here, which is what it really is for L2? Two minus epsilon? Well, I mean, it's it's not an L2 plus epsilon. It's L2 minus epsilon you actually want. I think it's just an artifact of the language that came from representation theory. This, this automorph forms are two two minus it's not, it's not important. It's not important. You can go uh, ahead. This is a finite volume space. So this, which one is stronger? Finite. Uh... Never mind. I'm sorry I brought it up. It's okay.
Two plus epsilon. Plus epsilon. <laughs> yes, it should be the tempered thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. two minus epsilon is something else. Any further questions? Yes, um, I, I just, uh, uh, maybe this question uh, is somehow irrelevant, but uh, you didn't mention periodic fields, did you? Uh, I mean, you, you have some local Archimedean results, but, uh, and, and, and of course global, but is there a... Yeah, right back Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for 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 this for the isomorphism of for the isomorphism of a Borel map in low degree, we only need this Archimedean result. Uh, I see. The periodic result does not apply in the low. Way. The cohomology, cohomology only appears in the Archimedean price. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Okay, so it's just irrelevant. Yeah. Okay. Okay, any more questions? Okay, thank you very much again. Uh, so uh, we, we now have speakers so, uh, scheduled for more than a month, I think. So next week we have Hua Ye Li. He will talk about uh, an infinitesimal variant of go jacquet trace formula and its comparison. So, hope to see you again next week. Thank you. Thank you. Start sure. teaching next week, so I hope so. Yeah, we'll start teaching. Yeah. We will finish teaching soon. <laughs> Lucky you. But you teach from home, right? Yeah, yeah. we teach at home. I mean, I teach at 10.30, so I, I may have to avoid the last five, 10 minutes. That's it. What do you teach, Fredo? Abstract algebra, 